Hi guys, welcome to Pixel Affair. It's Kobe here, and in today's video, we are going to talk about particles in Cinema 4D. And we are going to talk about just the Cinema 4D standard particle system. No thinking particles or espresso whatsoever. And at the end of the day, we are going to use it to create something like this using the standard particle emitter with um, field force and trail, tracer of um, the tracer. All right, so we are going to create this particular effect where and particles are moving on the surface of a sphere and the trails are tra um, tracing it and you use the hair of material to render it and you use the same technique to do this one as well so this one is just the letter um letter eight and the particles are moving on the surface of the letter eight and the tra um, tracer is tracing it and you are going to use the standard particle emitter to do all these um effects and I use the same effect on this um, scene as well, in this scene as well, on the bottle and the helix to get the particles moving around it. So let's actually get into Cinema 4D and see how we will do something like this. So I, let me go ahead and close this. And now I'm in Cinema 4D R25, but what I'm going to talk about, you can literally do it on almost every Cinema 4D um, software except for the field force part which i think was introduced in cinema 4d r21 so if you don't have um, r21 apples then it means the field force part you can actually not do that but the particle system is literally in almost every cinema 4d software that you have right now so let's actually before we talk about it then we, i'll first explain the particle system and how it works and everything so if you are very familiar with the particle system the standard cinema 4d particle system then you can skip it to the later Part where I'll talk about how I did those effects with the particles moving on the surface uh, for surface and using the tracer to trace it. So in this first few minutes, I'm actually going to explain how the particle system works for someone who doesn't know how it works. So to create a particle um, in Cinema 4D, the standard particle, all you have to do is to come into the top here where you see the tabs. You can see simulate. You click on simulate, and down here you can see we have particles. You click on particles and you, you open this one and you choose emitter now just by doing that you create this particular box and if you hit play you can see particles are coming out of the box All right there's not so much about this particular um emitter so let's actually get into attributes and see what um, the attributes of this emitter so if you first come into the emitter tab itself you can see this is where we control the size of the emitter, All right? And if we hit play, you can see the particles are going straight. But if you want it to go all around, you can actually increase the um, horizontal and you can see it's going around, but it's not going upwards. You can see it's going on the side and side, but it's not going upwards. So if you want it to go up as well, we can also increase the vertical. And now if you hit play, you can see it going upwards as well. So that's basically, the features that you have in here let's go back to where the particles control are so now in the particles this is the base rates um rent editor and the battery render so maybe if you have a lot of particles but in your viewport you want it to be few so that it can work quicker that's how these things are there so in the you can increase the base rate in render and when you render it will be a lot but in the viewport it will be small but if you want to generally increase your particles this is where you increase it so if I hit play, you can see we have just few particles coming out. But we can increase it to like say um thousand, thousand, and if we hit play, you can see plenty of particles are coming out. The visibility also controls the viewport scene. So if I now reduce the visibility 17% and I hit play, you can see like the particles has reduced. Right? The stop emission and the start emission is basically tell the pipe um and emitter when to start and when to so it starts right from frame zero if I hit play. It starts right from there but if i actually type in say 20 and hit play you can see it starts from frame 20 so all this part it wouldn't start so we get frame 20 then it starts coming right and the same thing where we want it to stop so if i say at 60 so if from it'll start from frame 20 and at frame 60 it will stop emitting you can see now nothing is emitting so that's basically the start and stop emission let me reset it Back to default. The C2 is basically change where the particles come from. So when you have multiple um, emitters, you can actually change the seed for each of them so that the particle that is generating will be random. 
So that's what basically the seed is. The lifetime is also about how long the particle lasts. So now it lasts 600 frames. So it stays in for the um, scene for long. I can reduce it like say 20 frames. And if I hit play, you can see it's ending right at frame 20. Then it starts immediately, it, it gets to frame 20, it ends. Now we can also add variation to the life. So if we increase it, now some will last longer than 20 and some will even die quicker. So, so you see how the whole thing works. So that's basically what the lifetime and the uh, variation does. This speed, which is self-explanatory, how fast the particle you want it to go or how slow you want it to go. So that's basically it. And you can add variation to the speed as well. So some will be faster and some will be slower. Nothing serious. We have rotation in as well, which you might not see on this particular particles, but when you add objects, can add rotation so that when the particles are moving and it's being affected by forces, it has those rotation and makes it look natural. So that's basically about the rotation as well. And the rotation, you can add variations to it. End scale basically talks is about when the particle is actually growing, the longer it lasts, then it begins to get bigger. All right. So the, the longer it lasts, whilst it's growing, then it, it ends getting bigger. That's basically about the end scale. And that one you can add variation to it. The rest, for instance, something like Tadinus here, I'll actually explain it later. So let's see. Now we know basic um, what basically the emitter does, right? That's all it's doing right now. But you can also add forces to our emitter. So if I hit play, you can see it's just going straight. But if you come to the simulate in here, we have forces, and you can add some of the forces. To affect our particles so the first like let me actually use one of them see turbulence and turbulence gives it some give it some random turbulence and now you can see some are moving about and everything can increase the turbulence a bit and if i hit play you can see it's also um, affecting the particles maybe we increase the scale of the turbulence and now if i hit play See, it can actually increase the skill more and it makes it moves. You know. So there are all sorts of particles that you can use to affect, forces that you can use to affect our particles. So I'll actually add gravity. And if I hit play, you can see now gravity is making it fall right after that. Now, one thing about particles is that if I hit play and now I hit render, I cannot render. So if I want to see the particles, what I have to do is to there are several ways that we can do that one way is to simply add the object that you want to see so let's say i'll add a, um, a cone i'll make it smaller maybe at the bottom and a bit smaller here so for us to see the particles we have to add a, some ob object that we want the particles to look like so i'll add the cone and then i'll actually change the cone um orientation to plus z so that i'll be looking for it like that so if I hit play, it's not it's still not showing, right? Let's actually go into the emitter. And if you come down here, you see this show object, we make sure we check it. And now if we hit play, you can see our cones are being generated. Let's reduce the particles. So that it works faster. Let's go back again and hit play. Right? So you can see it's, it's we can see the um, cones are generating. If I hit render, you can see the cones. We can even make it a bit smaller, right? Now there's an issue. You can see what even though the objects are turning and everything, but the cones are not necessarily following the particles orientation, I mean. So if I come into the particle emitter again and down here, you can see tangential. It's not f following the tangent of the particles. So if I check tangential, you can see now, it's following the tangent of the particles. So everything moves in the direction and it makes sense now. So that's basically what this tangential and the um, show object does. So with that being said, it, you still can go ahead and add other objects. So for instance, I've added a cone. Maybe I want to add sphere. I can add sphere as well, make it smaller. And I'll add it to the meter. And it wouldn't be cone only again. It will be now cone plus um, spheres. You can add um other objects tubes make it smaller add it to it and instantly it will become 
it will be generating right there's another way that we can actually see our um, particles by using MoGraph. so if i come here and create a clonal object i can simply add um let's see my cones again i'll make it smaller again and i'll make it a child of the clonal object right and in the clonal object i'll change the mode to object mode and then the object i want the clone to clone on is the emitter so now if i put the emitter here and hit play and see now it's generating the clones um the clone is generating on the emitter the particles the emitter is emitting so you can use it as well right and with this one you can actually go ahead and affect it with something like um the random effector all the effectors and stuff can still affect it and you can even use deformers as well like see the bend deformer and things to want bend the clones and everything whilst still following the movement of the particles so it's interesting way of working now with the forces let me actually come to simulate forces you can see we have all these forces which you can play around with we have wind um rotational gravity friction you can play around with them to see what it all does and it's very useful maybe as an appropriate time i'll explain what each and every one force does but one force that we are going to focus on is the field force and this was brought this was released i think in sma 40 r21 and since it came into sma 40 r21 it has sort of uplifted the uses of the sma 40 standard particle system right it used to be all that you could do with it initially the things i did but now with the field force you can go ahead to do a, a lot of extra stuff that's what i basically used to do um all the effects i showed you earlier so let me actually clear everything i have in here and, and just left with the field force and i'll go ahead and create a new particle so i'll come to particles and i'll choose emitter right and if i hit play everything is back to default the way we started right now with the field force, we can actually use um, some of the fields in my 4D fields to control or direct our particles. So if I come in here and I'll first of all choose, um, let's say random, and I hit play, nothing is happening, but um, some, I mean, something is happening, but we cannot see it clearly. So, if I increase the strength of the field force and hit play again, maybe it will exaggerate. And you can see now it's randomly moving our particles. So it's affecting our particles. With the field force, there's a lot that you can do with it. But for now, let me actually use it to show how simple, like how we used it to achieve all these effects that I showed earlier. So let me actually, first of all, delete the random. And now, first thing I want to do is to how I want, you can make, use the field force to make the emitter follow like a spline. So for instance, with this emitter being here, right? I want it to follow, let's say, a helix. So I can actually create a helix here. And I'll probably move the helix back. And then maybe increase the height. You know what let me actually leave the helix in the middle i'll change the orientation to x this way and now we want the emitter and um, particles to follow this helix spline so all we have to do is to select the field force drag in our helix in here and what we have to do is to um actually i think set absolute and if we hit play um nothing much is happening you know what no let's actually leave it to change direction let's actually change the velocity type to change direction and if we hit play you can see it's going backwards right it's not actually following it so what i'll do is i'll move the emitter close to let's see the tip of this line here so that yeah it starts right somewhere here but if i hit play still it's bouncing back so what I have to do in the helix, I have to reverse the helix. So I can simply click on reverse. And now if I hit play, straight away, it's just following the helix, right? So now if I increase the speed of our, of our particles, you can see, and let's increase the time as well. 
and see now our particle is following the helix so we can reduce the um, size and everything and it works so that's basically one simple way that you can use um the fill force to make particle follow our splines right so you can now draw our shape and make our particle follow and this just this is a very powerful um, and useful thing for cinema 4d so you can go ahead and add your extra forces um let's see the turbulence and let's see and all of them will work on top of that right you know see the turbulence is affecting it whilst it's still following the path so you can play around with it to get a lot of things but let's see how we used it to actually make um our particles follow the surface of our object right so with that i'm going to create a completely new scene so i'll create a new scene so with my new scene just like we use the spline to direct um the path of our particles we are going to use a surface so the surface you are going to use is the sphere so i'll create a sphere and I'll increase the segment so that you get some smooth sphere. Now, to do that, we will need the volume builder. So the volume builder, which was introduced in R20, we bring in the our volume builder and we make the sphere a child of the volume builder. And when we select the volume builder and come to the attributes, you can see in the volume type, we have sign distance field. We can actually change it to vector. And with this vector generated, it can actually guide our path, the path of our particles right now the size the vox the size of the voxel here is very important because the bigger it is the further away it can go away from our object so the, the smaller it is the closer it stays to our object so i reduce it to like say one and now from this one should be cool so this is what you are going to use to control um the path of our particles so now let's first of all hide it right and then let's come into assimilate and create our particles. And also, if we hit play, you can see our particles. Let me actually go back. Our particles play and everything is fine. And now let's go into our assimilate and the forces and create our field force. So nothing happens as of now, right? So the first thing we are going to do is to use with the field force what we want to use um, to control the our particles is the volume. So in the field force, just like we drag in the spline. Let's drag in the volume builder and tell it choose volume object, right? And if you hit play, still nothing much changes. So what you have to do is in the velocity type, we change it from add velocity to set absolutes. And now if you hit play, you can see our particles are not moving. Now what's basically going on, let me bring back the volume builder is that the volume builder has actually is telling the field force to limit the particles, I think basically to move around the surface or this space so if the particle is not within this space it sort of cannot move that's what i'm thinking so every particle should be within the free space which is just literally the surface of our sphere so for us to make up um, um particles to move let's first of all move our emitter and we know the size of the um, sphere right which is 100 centimeters so if i move my uh, emitter to like say 100 centimeters on z or z it's basically on the surface of our sphere it's literally on the surface of our sphere if I actually disable the volume you can see it's on the surface of our sphere so let's reduce the size of our emitter so to like say two so that it stays somewhere on the surface no for now i don't like the work plane so i come into filter and i'll take off work plane so that it don't distract us so now if i bring back the volume builder and let me hide it you don't need all these colors and hit play you see still our particles are not moving so in the i'll go into the um, particles and i'll take off the speed of the particle because i want it to be con uh, completely controlled by the field force and in the field force i'll increase the strength to like probably 100 and let me see what happens i mean not much because even though it's generating this, it doesn't know exactly where it should go. It's not given, there's no proper position or anything to direct our particles. So what we have to do is in the volume builder, we can actually use fields, fields to actually, you know, generate volumes as well. So we can come into create and you come to fields and you can add a random field, which you can also do it from right here. 
right? So with the volume builder selected, I'll make the random field a child of the volume builder. And you can see it has generated this um, voxels um, in the middle here, the vectors in the middle here, which is square. And that's because if you select the random and come, I mean, in the volume builder and select the random field in there, you can see the creation space is set to box. But we want it, the randomness to affect this, this sphere that um, we've created. So we change it from box to object below. And you can see now it's giving the vector that the, the sphere generated, it's giving it a bit of randomness, right? So I'll go into the random again, actually, um, the random field again. And then the mode, I'll change it from normal to cross, right? So with that set, and let's go into the random, we can actually increase the scale of the random to like probably 700. And now you can see we have some randomness on the surface of the sphere. Now let's go ahead and now I think we are done with the volume builder so I can hide it. And if we hit play and go to our particles, you can see now it's following moving on the path right so what we can do in the volume builder we can click okay the strength is set to 100 so basically now if i um use something like a uh, tracer right to trace our particle you can see it's now following this particular path and it's following the surface of our sphere but we don't see so let me actually hold control to drag the sphere to get a copy of it so that we see it's actually moving on the surface of our sphere. I can create a new material and make it um, black, right? And now um, I'll select material, the color, I'll make it black. And I don't need the specular and all of that. So I'll, the material selected, let me actually double click. I'll uncheck the specular and everything will be fine. So that we see what actually happened. So you can see, our particles are moving on the surface of the sphere. So that's basically what I did. So from here, what I did was to take the um, emitter, right? And I created a null object because it's right in the middle of the circle. And I make the emitter child of the null object. And I sort of added animation. So I'll set a keyframe at frame zero here and at frame, let's say 150, goes 360. And let's hit play to see what happens. So you can see the particles that are being generated are now moving on the surface of the sphere. So I can actually increase the particles to like, um, let's see, 50 by 50. And now if I go back and hit play, you can see it's now generating all these splines on the surface of our spheres. So that's basically how I use this scenario to create um, these lines on this here because it's this right at the surface of our circle right so that's how i used it in this scenario so what i did is i duplicate this particle so i can actually go into um here and shoot the whole scene itself so i duplicate duplicated the particle um the emitters right and now it was being traced so all i have to do is to hit play you can see it's moving on the surface of the um, sphere, right? I even later, you know, animated the sphere in here, but basically, so I duplicated all of them and have a couple of them. And after that, I added a tracer. So if I go back, hit play, can see all of these surface um, emitters are moving on the surface of our sphere, and it's generating this nice looking if i come into my window picture viewer you can see and we have this nice looking sphere right so that's basically what i did with the sphere so after doing one emitter you can actually duplicate it and you know you can get this one like i did here so that's how i did the first one now with the text one Let's do the one that I use the text. So let's actually 
coming here and create it from scratch again. So now we know how we did it in the first one. So let's redo it in case you missed something. So I'll come into here and I'll create my um, particle first. I'll reduce the size to something like, um, the size is quite important. So I'll reduce it to probably two. I think two should be fine. And now um, another thing is in the particle, I'll actually take off the speed to zero and maybe um, the battery. I think two will be fine for the text one, right? And then the next is I'll now create the text object I want to make like, um, or the object, any object could be any object, either text or whatever object you want. So I'll create the text and I'll change it, type in um, eight, because eight is what I actually did, but it could be any number or it could be any text. I'll put it in the middle. And now I'll put the text under a connect object. So connect object. So that's, and let's actually give it a bit of rounding so that it looks cooler. Yeah. Right, maybe two. So that's basically our text now. And remember I told you our emitter needs to stay on the surface of, of the object so that it can, you know, it can move within the range where the voxel will be set, right? So now let's go ahead and create a voxel. So I'll come in here and I'll create my volume. I'll make the connect a child of it. And then I'll reduce the voxel to one, right? We know we are going to add um, our randomness. So let's actually random, not random effect, but random field. So I'll add my random field which I'll make the child of the volume as well. You can actually make the eight a child of the volume and um, the connect object a child of the volume so that you see what's going on. So the random, we change the mode to, um, first of all, let's change from sine distance to vector. And now we change the mode from normal to cross and the random in the creation space, we change it from box to ob object below. And maybe we can increase the scale of the random to probably 800. Right, so now we've generated our voxel that we are going to use to control our emitter or the particles. So now let's go ahead and create our field force. So I come to simulate forces and I'll create my field force. And in there, I'll drag the volume builder. It will ask me, do I want point object or volume object? I'll say volume objects. And now I'll change the velocity type to set velocity and I'll increase the strength to 100 was fine. You can play around it. So everything should be fine by now. And let's hide our volume. And the next thing is if we hit play, like as usual, our emitter is not on the surface of our eight, so we cannot see. So what I did was that you can actually clone emitters um on the surface of any object so i actually created a clone object i made the image a child of the clone object and the object i want to clone on the surface is the eight which i've actually put in the connect object that's the reason why i actually uh, brought the eight in the connect object not because of the volume meter, but because of the clone right so in the clone i'll change the mode to object and object i want to clone on is the connect object which i have the eight in so now you can see it has generated all these emitters in here. So if I hit play, you can see it's everything is working fine. Now let's continue, uh, go ahead and um, create the number of particles we want. So I'll increase it to like say um, 500 will be one, 500 emitters all on the surface of our um, um, of our eight, right? So that's what the part where the particles are going to be generated and will be affected by the field force and everything should be fine, right? So with this set, you know, one thing is hap what is happening is that even though it's we have all these emitters, but it's one emitter which is being duplicated several times and it's, so everything that's happening is happening in one emitter and it's like it's being duplicated all this while, but we want all of them to be emitters on their own. So it means that we have to make the cloner editable. So what I'll do is I'll, I'll create a copy, a copy of the clone in case later I want to do some changes. And I'll disable this one and the emitter in it. So I'll hide it. And now with the copy that I've created, I'll make it editable. 
So now with this, we have a lot of emitters that we've created all on the surface of the eight. And now in the field force, um, everything has been added. Let's see what's going on. In the volume as well, everything is, is fine and we should be good to go. So let's actually check. Um, let's hide this one. And if we hit play, can see our particles are moving on the surface of our eight, right? You can reduce the strength probably um, 50. Yeah, and you can see our particles are moving on the surface of our eight, right? Unfortunate thing is that we will be seeing all of these um, emitters, but there's this issue. What if you want to change, let's say, some settings with the emitters? There are several ways that you can actually get to select all of the emitters at once without you not going down, scrolling down, all of that. So the first way is to, if I middle click on the cloner object, you can see it selects all the child of it has. And now if I hold control and click this one, it leaves the, the parent and now all the emitters are selected. So now if I come in here and I change anything, I'm changing anything, all of them for the emitters. Aside this, another way we can actually do is that we can simply come into selection with all this, the child selected, you can come to select and create a selection filter. So if I create a selection object for all the objects I have selected, you can see now we have this selection created and I can hide this one and I can even call it emitter, emitters, all right? So anytime I want to select all the emitters, all I have to do is to double click on this icon, not the emitter text, the icon, and you can see I have all my emitters selected and I, I can come in and change whatever I want to change in here at once and it will affect all the emitters. Or we can also use Espresso, but I don't want to go into Espresso. So this is a quick way. So we can create a selection for any object that you want. And now we can select it at any time and do the changes we want and it will affect all of them at once. So you can go ahead and hide them. Now, for us to see, we need the sweep. So I'll double click on it to select all of them. And now if I come to my MoGraph tracer, I'll add it and you can see now the tracer object is also tracing all of the, um, all the emitters. So now we can actually go ahead and increase our timeline. And now this is how I basically created um, the eight. So we can use the same strategy on any object. So it's the same thing that I did with this one as well, the bottle one as well. So if I hit play, you can see it's the same thing that I did and after that I animated the camera. And that's basically the same strategy I used in here. And you can see if I come in here, you can see you have the all the um, emitters that I've created and everything and the fields and all of that. And in here, one thing I also did is that, so you can see, one, we have two field forces in here, but you can restrict it with the emitter. So with the emitter, if you come, we select any emitter and come to um, its attributes, you can see we have include. So you can tell your emitter to include or exclude any object. So this particular emitter, the one moving along the spline, I told you to exclude the one um, the field force for the um bottle uh, emitters right so you see i've chosen the exclude and i've added this field force which is for the ones on the bottle and the only one that is affecting the um, this particular emitter is this one and the same thing so with this emitters too um with this ones too i excluded this particular field force because i didn't want this one the one controlling the ones on the um, the spline to affect the ones on the bottle so i excluded them from this as well so that's basically all i did to create all of these um, effects so in here i used it to create the sphere so i created one emitter on the surface and i duplicated it and i animated it moving around around the sphere and that's how i got to achieve this particular effect and with this one the eight i just showed all i did was to I created um, several emitters using the clone on the surface of the eight. And now I use this um, um, trace object to trace the line. And I use the um, hair object to render. And the similar thing with this one as well. 
Um, if I come down here, Bottle, and hit play, you can see it's the same thing I used down here. Now, let me quickly show how I actually use the hair object to render. So, let me go into the one I created. And you can see if we hit render, the hair object you cannot see. So, all we have to do is to come into our object, um, our material tab, go to create, and you can see we have new hair material. You can create our hair material and you apply it to our tracer object. And just like that, you can render. So, if I hit render, you can see it's rendering our object. So, we can double click on the hair and change the colors. So, I double clicked on it. Unfortunately, my Cinema 4D crashed, so um, I was showing how you can render um, the tracer object. So I have this scene here. So I'll go ahead and come to create, um, and I'll create a new hair material. And if I double click on it, you can see it has this brown niche hair. So I'll apply it to my tracer object. I have one applied already, but I'll apply this particular one. And let's delete the one I had initially. So if you hit render, um, you can see you have this. Um, brownish looking object so what i did was to in the i have these two knots so this one um, it's using to control the color so what i did was to change the color so i made this one i think purple somewhere -ish, purple -ish, bluish somewhere like that and this one and um, you can actually duplicate it so i, I make this one the pinkish reddish stuff and then i created a third one which will be at the tip and that one I made it white, right? So that's basically what I did. And then in there, I took off the specular highlights. I didn't like it. So I took it off. And then I come, I, I think in the roots, I made the roots a bit. I've forgotten the actual numbers, but I basically reduced the root to 0 0.1, 0 0.01 or something. And this one to something of that sort. And if I hit render, um, let's see what we have. So yeah, something I think this is what I actually did. So you can play around with the thickness and everything and see what you have. So that's basically how I added um, the color and all the um, hair material textures and everything. It wasn't anything complicated. So all these things that I did, um, there's actually a simpler and a simple, uh, easier way to actually do the same thing. But you need a little bit of espresso, like sign a tiny bit of espresso and um, thinking particles. Nothing much of a big deal. But then, like, I wanted to find a different way. I mean, something that I can do within my own understanding without having to learn, like, espresso or anything. Like, some sort of experiment. And I felt like I realized this can work. And I thought I should actually use it. So it's something that can work. And I feel maybe... Some if someone watches this probably might get a better idea of how to use it to do something even more useful and something more interesting. So that's basically how um everything was done. And this is basically how my 4D particles work. Hope this was useful. And if you've learned anything, kindly let me know. And if there's something I did wrong, you can also let me know. Please leave a comment, kindly subscribe, and always um follow to support. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.